Hi, welcome to Positively Sparking, a podcast on internet marketing, online productivity, and business. Today I'm with Joel Harrison, client manager of Positive Sparks, expert VA, and we're going to be chatting through our favorite apps for the month of May. Hey Joel, welcome to the podcast. Hi Bill, how are you? I'm not bad. It was good seeing you last week. You're over in the UK. What what did you think of Cornwall? I was. Cornwall was lovely. Shame about the weather. It was pretty bad, wasn't it? And you missed that beautiful sunshine that came by by hours almost. Uh, yeah, but I did get it in Kent and it was a lot hotter in Kent than it was in Cornwall. So I think I made the right decision. I think you did too. You did it the right way around. Yeah, I did. <laughs> So, so when you come, being an expat, when you come back to the UK, how is it nowadays? How does it feel? It's horrible. It's really? Horrible. Go on. Go on. It's not, <laughs> it's not because of the people. Obviously, it's nice to see everybody, um, but just the, the chaos. Mm. Um, I mean, we had so much chaos on the trains. They were late, cancelled, delayed, changed. Oh, absolute nightmare. Um, and just, yeah, just the amount of people, like, even just walking, even in Cornwall, um it's yeah. just so busy i'm just not used to it well you're now used to this beautiful rural life in france aren't you you know uh, I am. you have it's all the so, space you need it's so glad i'm so glad to be home i was just, like this morning out with the dogs just i don't see anybody i just see the the nature <laughs> <laughs> just see the nature there's a no. sentence of tranquil living Yes, it is <laughs> definitely i've had a very quiet week and i'm slowly recovering from last week <laughs> and so, so in all that travel and chaos and now tranquility have you managed to find some apps for this month yes i do eventually yes i did <laughs> <laughs> well let's jump in there tell us about your first app okay well it's not really an app it's a i just, we'll call it probably a service um and obviously you know about this because i was using it while i was in the uk um and it it actually saved me actually in the UK because I had some problems um, beforehand, but it's actually um, something called TransferWise. And I speak about TransferWise quite a lot because I, I've used it for probably coming up to a couple of years now. Um, and it's a service which means that my clients can pay me in their currency um, and I receive it in my currency in euros. Um, and that's how you pay me, obviously. Um, so it it's, it, it's, it's a brilliant way. And it, and it saves on bank fees. And that's the main reason um, that I use it is because of the, the fees involved in in people sending me euros if they're not in the same currency as me. Um, and it also saves money on PayPal. So I replaced PayPal with this as well. Um, but what I'm going to speak about now is not TransferWise as a whole, but it um, something they've brought out recently, which is the borderless account with them. Um and which they have now started giving out debit cards for this borderless account. Um, so I set up the borderless account with them for um, uh, pounds and I've set up one for euros. So what I can do is I, I can add money to these accounts um, either with a card um, or I can send by a bank transfer because I now have UK bank details and I've got EU bank details as well. Um, And then I can switch between the two. So I can put money in my euros account and then I can convert it and it will go into my pounds account. Um, So what I did when I came away, um, because I had some problems with my English bank um, that I'd forgotten my PIN number because I obviously never use it. Um, (laughs) (laughs) What happened was I phoned them literally a week before I came away and said, look, I've forgotten my PIN number um, and I'm coming to the UK next week what can I do? And they said, well, we can send you out another PIN number, but sending it to France, you're unlikely to get it in time. So I had to change my address to my dad's address in the UK so that the PIN number would go to his house so that I could get it when I got to UK. In actual fact, it never arrived. Um, And when I got back to France, it was here in my post box. Um, So (laughs) luckily, I had my TransferWise debit card. um, And what I had done is I'd moved... Um, euros into pounds in my borderless account Um, so I had pounds in there which I left in there I didn't because you can transfer them to your to a a normal bank account and I hadn't transferred them to my UK bank account just in case I didn't get my pin number 
Um, but I had my TransferWise card, which arrived literally the Friday before I came away. Um, really easy to um, sort out a PIN number. Um, you literally just have to put in a code on their website um, and then they'll give you your PIN number online. That was really simple. Um, and I used that the whole time I was in the UK. I did have to put a bit of extra money on it because I spent quite a lot. Um, but um, it was and it was brilliant because I've got the app on my phone. And every time I spent money on my card, it would come up and tell me that I just spent money in that shop which was really, I mean, obviously funny because it comes up immediately and you think, well, I've, I know I've just spent it because I was just, I was just in there. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it is brilliant. And um, it, say, yeah, it basically saved me um, last week because if I hadn't have had that, um, I would have struggled to, I'd have to have borrowed money off somebody. <laughs> Probably me. <laughs> you and my dad, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joe, everything that you described there, it's going to fit in with another app that I'm going to talk about. But what you're talking about and what TransferWise has allowed you to do is live in a modern way. You have a very modern life. So you're a Brit living abroad in France and you work digitally. Mm-hmm. So, so you're someone that's always going to travel. And traditionally, the way you would have had to prepare for that and, and get ready for that is probably change some cash currency into the currency you're going to yeah. uh, go and utilize and and work with your bank a number of weeks ahead to get going. And what that card's allowed you to do is just go. Just literally get out there and go, which is how we live in modern life. And I have, you know, there there is not many things in the world that irritate me, so I'm quite a calm guy, as you know. (laughs) But the way our banks are is one of them. And this all stems back to the banking crisis and everything else about it. But... You know, you are finding that your traditional bank does not fit in with your modern day life. And TransferWise is, is helping you get around that in a new way. Mm-hmm. Uh, number one, by saving you money. Yeah. And number two, by offering you that speed and flexibility through their borderless account, which you which your card is for, isn't it? Exactly. Um, yeah. When we first met, I was an expat too. And so TransferWise was something that, that I've used a long time as well. Um, and it, it's just incredible that a service like that can exist and be so much cheaper than mm-hmm. a bank when it comes to exchange rates. Yeah. When a bank's whole business is money, mm-hmm. it's, crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. So I, I think it's a wonderful service. I think the borderless account is a great idea. And the fact that you can have a card in it, and, and I think I'm right in saying that you can use the card in, in say, Paris and it'll give you euros out of a speed bank and when you come to the uk it will be in sterling is, is that right yeah i think what i've not tried the difference yet um but what i think you have to do is you have to have your money in the borderless account currency that you're going to spend it in so i had it in my pounds mm. um so if i was going to spend it over here i probably need it in my euros account but you can use the same card it's, it's yeah. just one card for all the currencies that you hold yeah yeah. yeah. And, and you can transfer between them, can't you, in, in yeah. online as such? It's seconds. Uh, I did. I literally did it in seconds and it goes from mm. one to the other. And then I withdrew it yesterday into my account. Um, yeah. And it's just so fast. <laughs> it's yeah. just unbelievable how quick it is. It, it is incredible. And, and this new generation of banking is beginning to emerge. And I love it. I don't know if you remember, we spoke about um, a, a new bank account, a personal bank account called Monzo that I have in the UK, which is very similar to what you were describing, where transactions appear on your phone as they yeah. happen. Yeah. So, you know, as you said, in the moment, you know, you know, you knew that you just come out of Primark, didn't you, in Truro last week, <laughs> having used your, you know, spent a bit of money. So you just you told everyone that... I shop at Primark. Thanks, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> and many other places too. <laughs> you know, but that, that uh, in, the, in the moment, you knew that. But in yeah. six months' time... If you needed to recollect that transaction, it's now there on that app. And that's where that becomes a really exactly. useful thing. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is good. It's, um, yeah, I'm pleased. I'm pleased. I, I mean, because I, I got it and they, they sent me an invitation for it. It wasn't um, open mm. for public. Um, so I'm so, I'm so lucky it arrived that day. Otherwise, <laughs> would have been very I, different. 
<laughs> I would have struggled. Um, I would have struggled. But actually, the card now is available to everybody. It's out of beta. So, yeah, there everyone can go. go and sign up. <laughs> and I'm really glad it did arrive. Otherwise, we would not be talking about this on the podcast. We wouldn't. No. I don't <laughs> Dead. <laughs> <laughs> great stuff so so transfer wise is transferwise.com isn't it if i remember it, yeah it is transferwise.com yeah. would you recommend everybody look at this for their holidays yes definitely i did try i did try to get jerome to have a look at it before we went away and i offered to if he gave me some euros i would do some pounds for him but he was like no he's too old school <laughs> <laughs> but yeah if you're if you're not old school like Jerome and my dad, um, <laughs> then yeah, yeah, go and have a look if you're going on holiday because it is brilliant and it's it's mm. so easy to use. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, we have one too, and uh, you know, we'll be using it in a couple of months in France and then uh, mm-hmm. later on in the autumn in America. So that's where it really becomes a powerful thing because that's two currencies yeah. on top of sterling that we live in every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for that kind of, if you know, if you live that kind of life, if you holiday abroad or and change currency often then it's just a great service and the thing you know i know there are cheaper services out there that actually work out cheaper than transfer wise but the simplicity of it is also what makes it absolutely fantastic exactly it's just so it's so simple to use it yeah it kind of beats the other the other ones i think for that Mm, definitely so cool well on this theme of banking i'm going to tell everybody about tide uh so As we just said, we're going through this revolution in banking, which is a wonderful thing. The digital world pushing an industry that needs to change. Because unlike Jerome and your dad, we're not old school. We're new school. (laughs) (laughs) And um, a few months ago, I I discovered this uh, wonderful new personal account in the UK called Monzo, which is a new style of banking. The bank account literally works off an app on your phone. And Tide is a business version of okay. a similar kind of bank. So, you know, as we, we, we're coming to the end of the financial year. We're now in the new financial year for Positive Sparks, and it was the time to look for a different bank account. Uh, we're with a very traditional bank. Uh, we've been using, you know, their security system, which for us was a little fob and a password and all the traditional things that you have. And we just encountered consistent slowness and problems all of the time. Mm. And tied by using an app on your phone, Instantly verifies who you are. You know, mine is fingerprint driven. Yeah. Um, it, it uses the app on the phone to log you into the website as well. So a beautiful thing, you log into the app, you actually hold your phone to the computer screen and it logs you into the bank account. It's amazing. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and like you were saying with TransferWise, any transaction that you do instantly comes up as a notification on your phone. Mm-hmm. And because it's a business bank account, uh, you know, we're we're interested in not only what we spend, but what we receive as well. Yeah. And Tide will instantly inform you when a, an invoice comes in. So okay. it's so much easier than being logged into it, you know, having to log in. Every, you know, I do that once a week, or I did do in the old account, and look through what's gone through and see who I need to tick off and who we need to chase. Mm. Um, so much simpler. It is all there. Uh, we can export everything that we do on our account as a CSV. So, you know, whatever accountancy packages we use, it becomes uh, compatible with that. And mm-hmm. I, I believe at present it's, it integrates instantly with Zero, which is a very common account system already in the UK. But, okay. uh, but it, the whole thing really excites me. And it really excites me because I fundamentally believe banking has to change. Um, but I'm also excited by the ease of the features. Mm-hmm. And suddenly I feel in control of my bank mm-hmm. account. That's I was trying to think in my head, what, what's the biggest difference psychologically and emotionally? And yeah. it's that they're working for me rather than making things more difficult. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is what the new generation of bank accounts, the new digital banks are bringing to the industry, and it's much needed. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, I, I'm the same with my, I mean, I've got my personal account and my business account at the same bank in France. Um, and although it's it's quite a good bank, I don't have any problems with it. I still have to then go in probably every day <laughs> to check if people have paid me. Um, it's yeah, it's it's not it's not as mm. technical as as what you have. It's it would be great if I could just sit here and 
my notifications come up on my phone to say people have paid me god that would save so much time <laughs> wouldn't it just yeah it's really good that you know there are some things i've not yet explored like you can you can actually issue an invoice from the app okay which, cool. uh, i've not tried so you know that they are trying to think of new things for a business too. There are some things yeah. they need to develop. We can't yet set up a direct debit, but that's mm-hmm. the next thing they're going to develop. Uh, you know, so so overall, if you if you're in the UK, which sadly you're not, Joe, this is I'm one not. instance where your tranquil life <laughs> is not able to do the same things. There are but, um, France. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if it interests you, go and have a look at tide.co. So it's T-I-D-E dot C O. Uh, and if you want to try a new style of banking for business, it's it's been a lot of fun for me so far. Ooh, the other, the other thing I should have said, actually, is it took me a couple of hours to set up. And, mm-hmm. you know, that, that time, the couple of hours, was was not me sitting there filling out forms. Uh, that, that maybe took a, a few minutes. It was, it was from completing their form on, mm-hmm. on their initial setup process on the app to them actually verifying my identity and setting up the account. So the whole yeah. thing was two hours, mm-hmm. which um, is so fast. Yeah. Well, yeah, it is definitely. Great stuff. As you can see, I support this, this new banking world that we're coming into. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So time for me to get off my hobby horse. What's the next app for you, Joe? <laughs> okay, so my next app is um, <clears throat> something which a friend... Um, recommended to me um probably a couple a month or so ago now and on her way through to spain she was moving to spain lisa um she came to visit um and it's an app um we're very book people we actually met through a book forum many years ago um and it's um mostly for fiction books but i think there are some um non-fiction books on there and it's called the pigeonhole and what it is it's very similar to another app we spoke about called blinkist um Rather, it's it, it's difficult to explain. You you um, sign up for um, a specific book that that looks good that you want to read, um, and it starts on a certain day, and then they'll send you part of that book, and it's called a stave. Um, and then over the over maybe a couple of weeks, um, you get ten or twelve staves each day. So it, you're looking at around half an hour read um, per day. But it just breaks down a book um, into smaller chunks so that you you can find the time to read it. Because for me, I tend to just read when I go to bed now um, and I've got my Kindle. But this this is um, it means I can I know that I've got half an hour. If I've got half an hour, I can sit and read one of these days. Um, and I'm reading a book at the moment, which I think is fairly um, new, um, new out. Um, and I've read two staves um, already. I've got another eight to go. Um, but the app is really good because you can read it on your browser. So you can log in and read it on your browser. So while you're at work, if you've got a spare sort of 20 minutes, half an hour, um, or, or I've got an app on my iPhone um, and I can read it on my iPhone. It's brilliant. Um, but the good thing is the um, books that come through on here um, are from top publishers. Um, so, they're likely to be from authors that you already know. Um, for example, there was a book, they, they do competitions as well sometimes. So rather than let everybody read a popular book coming through, you have to kind of like sign up for it and then you get picked or you don't get picked to read it. Um, and I signed up for one the other day and it was the new one from um, Alison Weir, who writes um, the books about um, Henry VIII and the Tudors and stuff. Um, I didn't get access. Unfortunately, I didn't win that competition. <laughs> um, but it, it just shows that some the, the authors are pretty good on here and it, you're kind of like getting first first refusal to read these books before they come out in the mainstream. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, I haven't – this the, the book I'm reading now is the first one I've actually sat down and read because I just haven't had time with going to the UK and everything. Um, but it's it's really good and I think I'm going to use it um quite regularly if there's books on there that that I want to read because obviously you can pick and choose um if you want to sign up to one or not um and there's also a lot of books on there that you can read at your leisure so you don't actually have to be reading it live with everyone else um 
And also the good thing, a lot of the authors are online as well and you can make comments about the book, give them feedback and then they'll, they'll reply to you as well. So, um, wow. yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's just a, yeah, another, another way of getting some reading in <laughs> when mm. you don't have time. So your last sentence there is the thing I love about what you're describing this app as. So in some ways I'm sort of worried about the, the whole practice of reading in general. Because mm-hmm. I, I look at myself and I used to, when I was a probably pre-teenager really, before I discovered computer games, I yeah. read quite a bit. And the way society and, and our lives have evolved, I don't read at all now. Mm-hmm. In fact, this podcast reflects what I do. I listen and I watch. So I listen to podcasts and I watch TV <laughs> and films. Um, <laughs> and so I'm absorbing information through my eyes and through my ears, yeah. but, not, but not through that graceful art of reading. Mm. So I love that this, you know, the pigeonhole's trying to recreate reading for, for the way we live our lives now. It's much yeah. needed. How long does it take you to read a stave? Um, probably about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. It depends what the book is, because obviously some of them are a bit longer than others. Mm. So some are shorter. Um, so, so yeah, it's not, it's not a lot. I mean, I read one in bed last night and it's, I'm struggling, but I have to get to the end. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, um, it's like I have to get to the end because I, otherwise it, I'm just going to get, yeah, out of sync with mm. everything. Totally. Um, but yeah, no, and I've, I've just had a look at the website and there's a business club as well, which has the nonfiction stuff in there. So they've got um, titles wow. in there like Deep Work by Carl Newport and, and things like that. So um, there is a business um, thing. I've not looked at that though yet. I'm going to have to look at that now <laughs> when we finish the podcast. It's funny. It that... <laughs> <laughs> that suddenly sparked my interest when you said that. Oh, it's really? It's weird, isn't it? it? It tells you like I've always read more factual and things that teach me things above yeah. stories. Mm-hmm. You know, I think I do prefer my, my favorite format for a story is film really. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but when you said that, I thought, Oh, I'll maybe have a look at it then. Whereas before I was thinking it's probably not for you, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, I, I tend to, I mean, I have a lot of nonfiction books, which I start and don't generally finish. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> But I do like my fiction books because it it kind of it kind of gives my brain a rest from yeah. thinking. Yeah. I understand that it's escape, yeah. and we all need that without exactly. doubt. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I watch my TV series on Netflix and I watch my films and whatever. Mm-hmm. But I do I do feel that I have to read, and I I learn so much through reading. I mean, I'm reading a book at the moment which is kind of nonfiction um, about it's called Sapiens or something like that. And it's really interesting, and it, and you learn so many new things. I don't think you could get that from the television um, if you don't find that particular documentary, if you know what I mean. <laughs> sure, I do. So do you ever read the full book, or is it just extracts from the books that you absorb? On, on Pigeonhole or? On Pigeonhole, gen- yeah. yeah. So on, on the app, not you, but on the app. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> That's what you're thinking. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's 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 the whole book. I think, um, as far as I know, it's the whole book. I okay. wouldn't think they would give you just extracts of it. I mean, the one I'm reading now seems to be pretty. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be like extracts from it. Mm, that is the whole God. book. So, so what is great for is because you know it's going to be twenty five, thirty minutes. Mm. It gives you a way of setting yourself the challenge of completing a book. Exactly. Yeah. I see. Exactly. In a in a in a set period, because at the moment I'll pick up a book and then it'll take me. <laughs> sometimes it could take me a couple of months to read a book. Um, whereas the way it's it's live, it's there. I mean, and if you do miss some, you can catch up. You have a month after it ends to to finish it if you don't finish it in that period. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, it just gives you kind of a a deadline to to read it and to read yeah. And, and it, in that way, I probably end up reading more books. And mm. as long as as long as the book's coming up on their on their list are, that interests me, I'm not going to just read the book for the sake of it. You know, Joe, <laughs> you've sold this to me. I'm now going to give it a go. Oh, really? I'm circling okay. it and everything. That means download, <laughs> act on. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> I will. I'll go ask you in a couple of weeks. <laughs> That's it. i what you're talking about. I've forgotten the name of it and everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so where this differs from Blinkist, and just correct me if I'm wrong here, but I seem to remember that Blinkist took the key points out of a book yeah. and presented it, them to you. Yeah. Whereas this is the whole book yeah. um, that you absorb in, in chunks which are, are, are managed. Exactly. Yeah. It's literally okay. just, um, yeah, an instalment, and which is called a stave. Does it offer poetry? Um, possibly, yeah. Um, I think, actually, I've seen um, one come up the other day, a, a poetry-style one. So, Did yeah. Because mm. that's so. the one thing I sort of keep thinking. Want, I want to bring more into my life, you see. Okay. This meets issuing that out live on air <laughs> but that's that's something that I, I do think about quite a lot I think I just never get time yeah. and um, I wonder if it can help me do that we shall find out I'll report back when you check on me in a couple of weeks we'll see yeah, yeah definitely no <laughs> so where, where can we find the pigeonhole um it's literally the pigeonhole.com um or you can find it in the app store um and I think it's just pigeonhole on the app store and in google play as well Okay, fantastic. Good stuff. So I'm going to move us from something which sounds very good for society to something which is good for advertisers and it's good for society dependent on your opinion, I guess. And this is a display advertising platform called Match to One. So it's Match, the M-A-T-C-H, number two, and then one written out, so O-N-E dot com. And this is one of the emerging new AI-powered display network advertising platforms. So what that means is the platform uses artificial intelligence to show banner ads for your business to people that the AI technology has deemed would like to see the ad. Right. It learns this by we place a pixel on your site and it monitors the people coming into your site, what they do, how much time they spend there, and begins to profile the type of person who engages with your site the best. Or we can set up a conversion for match to want to monitor. So if you have an e-commerce store, that conversion is probably going to be sales. If we have another kind of store, then it might be a certain action. But looking at a certain piece of content or completing a form or the standard things that we set up conversions for. And so th- this sort of emerging world of AI in advertising really intrigues me because it's, it's, uh, it's something that's coming up in a lot of our podcasts. Ed touched on this last week with our Evolver, Needle, the Google Analytics, um, great Google Analytics platform that we chatted with a couple of months ago. You know, they, they have some AI-powered features in, in what they offer too. And there's this whole great debate about is AI better than human minds in deciding something or not? And can it develop to the point where it is? Um, but I, I found that Match to One is one of the better ones. And, and they offer the ability to segment out your audience as well. So you can monitor people going to page one and make an audience from them and, and make that different to people who might go to page two, three or four. And all of these things help Match to One show your ads to different kinds of people. Uh, and all people who it knows are doing things on your site that you would think were positive. Um, it, it uses lots of the sites that we find on the Google Display Network. But a lot of the places it puts your ads are actually part of the Google Display Network. But what it's bringing to you extra is their AI technology, which is deciding where to put more budget, deciding what mm-hmm. kinds of people it wants to track. And for some, a lot of our clients, it's actually worked out very positively. So I would say if you're looking for a new way to promote what you do, have a look at something like Match to One and maybe set that up alongside something that you might create yourself if you're a pay-per-click person like we are. And if nothing else, having something which is AI-powered and comparing that to something that you create yourself is a great way to see how well you know your audience. If your AI power campaign actually outperforms your own campaign, 
then it's definitely worth looking into the data that something like match to one will give you because maybe your ideal customer is not who you think it is. Interesting. Mm, definitely so. So would you ever have a, what do you think of AI, Joe? How, how does it make you feel? The fact that artificial intelligence is coming into our lives and whenever I see it, I always think of aliens and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, don't, I to be honest, I've not never really thought about it until recently. Um, because I've seen quite a few articles pop up on Zest um about AI. <clears throat> um I don't I don't know really. I think as long as it doesn't steal my job, I'm okay with it. <laughs> you see, a lot of people say that. That's often the first thing that people yeah. come back with. And, and there's no doubt that robots and AI will replace some jobs. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's very hard to see a world where they do everything. Yeah, true. And it's very hard to see a world where they get involved in the, the more human side of what we do, so creativity, imagination, um, decisions which are not just about data. You know, data doesn't give us the 100% answer. It just, give us, it just gives us statistics to yeah. base our creativity, imagination, business decisions off. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so I hear what you're saying, and <laughs> no doubt it is a threat to some jobs. Um, and, and here, you know, the, the um, match to one, for example, could be a threat to us as pay-per-click people because it, it has the potential to replace the need for display campaigns set up by humans. Will it ever do that? No, I don't think it will. I think what it can do is come alongside and be a really powerful addition because it, it will go out there and follow the data. And it's just interesting to see what results you get back from a 100% AI-powered result versus the human campaigns that you set up where you do bring in human elements. So whether that's the type of person in your mind that you want to attract or whether it's things that you believe you should put into the ad copy that you're using because it, you believe it's more persuasive. It's it's just a great thing to have to sit alongside. It's interesting and it's something that I would consider if I was in that area needing to put display ads on Google, but as I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> as you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> is enough. it free or is it paid for That's well nice. all, all advertising is paid for yeah so but, but what they don't do is charge you a fee to use the platform set up the okay. pixels oh, no, that's good then. um what, what you do is you pay onto the platform an amount of money which they then spend on your behalf yeah okay uh so so it works in that sense and but the way they make their profit is they take a slight commission on the mm-hmm. ad cost that you uh, charge by placing your ad on the Google Display Network or any of the other third-party sites yeah. that they'll place your stuff on. So uh, it's definitely worth a go. Cool. What's your app of the, the month then, John? It has to be TransferWise, the debit card, because it saved me. <laughs> it did. I mean, it had to be that one for you, didn't it? It did, yeah. <laughs> it's actually between TransferWise and Tide for me. Um, and I'd probably right now go with TransferWise because I've been using it so long myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and let's see if Ty can come back into a conversation in a couple of months when we've been using it a bit longer. But yeah. um, let's give this month's award to the new generation of banking. Yeah, we will. TransferWise <laughs> and it's orderless account. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, George, it's been great to have you here. As always, it was wonderful to see you last week. And uh, I hope... I hope great summers are waiting for both of us. Hopefully, yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> this podcast was brought to you by Positive Sparks, online advertising and pay-per-click agency for UK e-commerce businesses. If you would like three free tips on how to use pay-per-click to grow your business, please visit us at 3tips.positivesparks.com today.